First thing I think we can agree upon, guys, is the separation of variables. Um, if we're going to go ahead and find the general or the particular solution, we want to find the separation of variables, right? So over here, we can multiply by dx on both sides. That's kind of like the fastest and the easiest thing to do. Um, but in this case, you see, to get like the y to the other side, we're going to have to divide by y on both sides, right? So therefore, when I um, have this out, I'm going to be left with 1 over y dy equals x squared dx. We OK? Yes? Go ahead and integrate. 1 over y, we're again, we're again uh, we can't use the power rule. We're going to have to use logarithmic integration. So again, 1 over y is going to be uh, ln of absolute value of y plus c equals, and this is going to be 1 third x cubed plus, oh, I'm sorry, I told you I wasn't going to do that anymore. Ln of absolute value of y, again, plus c. But if you get the c to the other side, you're just going to get one nice big c. All right, now again, we're trying to, let's get over here. OK, so that's going to be, um, but that's not our general solution. We need to solve for y, correct? Yes, don't you guys agree? We need to solve for y. Um, so, well, solving for y right now, I see y is inside an absolute value, which we can actually get rid of the absolute value. That's not too bad. I'll, I'll go over that. Um, but we need to get rid of the logarithm, though. Does anybody remember how to get rid of the logarithm? Yeah, yeah like exponentiated, like both sides, right? You just kind of throw an e under there. So therefore, we have e to the ln of absolute value of y equals e to the 1 third x cubed plus c. Actually, yeah, plus c. So therefore, this gives us absolute value of y is equal to e to the 1 third x cubed plus c. Now, here comes the problem. Because if we want to get rid of the absolute value, that's actually really not that bad. Because if you guys think about the absolute value, all we need to do is consider two cases, when the value is positive or negative, right? So to really get rid of this, we have y equals plus or minus e to the 1 third x cubed plus c. And that's fine for a general solution, um, because we don't technically have value of c. Like, that's OK. But when we're trying to do a particular solution, it's not really preferred. We can do it that way. You could plug it in, but the only problem is you're going to have to plug it into like both, both of them, and you're going to have to determine if it's a plus or minus. And it's just not really a good way to go about the problem. But you could use it that way. I would just probably say what we're going to want to use is use some powers, or powers of exponents to kind of help us out. So rather than doing this as a general solution, I'm going to show you a different way. OK, so now let's try to simplify this. Now. Basically, if we were to add powers, what does that really mean in terms of exponents? What are we doing with the exponents if we're adding the powers? That means we're multiplying them, right? Think about it. multiplying exponents makes you add powers. So if I have adding powers, could I just rewrite that back as a multiplication problem? Sure. Yes. OK. Now, this is the cool part. So we have absolute value y. That didn't really help us with that. e to the 1 third x cubed times e to the c. Everybody agree, if you were to multiply these, you'd get to that, right? Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because, guys, e to the c is just another what? It's just another constant. So that's helping us get rid of this e. Now, when we do this, when I do y equals plus or minus c, e to the 1 third x cubed, do we really need to do plus or minus? Do we have any idea what c is? No. So guess what? If it's plus or minus, does it really matter for c? No. So the nice thing about this is when you do the plus or minus, this c, it absorbs that plus or minus. That is a nice general solution that I would want to use. The problem is, when you have the c up here as the power, 
it can't like absorb that plus or minus because it's in a it's inside of a function, right? You can't like distribute that plus or minus inside of the function. However, when you simplify it, now it's written as a product, it can absorb like that plus or minus and so on and so forth. Does that kind of make sense? All right. We'll do we'll do another problem where that kind of comes up, but I think it, it's very, very helpful for you guys. So again, you could do this one, y equals plus or minus this. But uh, I'm not even going to go through the math work for that because you guys will see it's just not even worth your time. The best thing to do is make sure you try to write this. So you can basically what you want to do is rewrite your C. If you need to get rid of that, rewrite your C as a product. All right, um, Carlos, we're not done. So now the next one is to find your solution for f of 0 equals negative 2. So we go ahead and look at this. Um, I kind of. So let's go ahead and plug in our values. So y in this case. So uh, we could say at f of 0 equals negative 2. If I was writing this at a FRQ, I'd say at this point. And then I'd write um, negative 2 equals c times e to the 1 third times 0 cubed. Well, 0 cubed times 1 third is just going to be 0. And e to the 0 is 1. So now I can just plug that back in. y equals negative 2 e to the 1 third x cubed. That's it. That's all I got for you.